Hello and welcome or welcome back to the Night Sky Knitting Channel. My name is Rachel, I am your host, and I am a knitter based out of Ottawa, Canada, and this channel is my chatty outlet to talk all things knitting with occasional guest appearances by other crafts because I have a strong tendency towards hyperfixation, and if I don't have a chatty outlet to talk all things knitting, I will ruin all my relationships by inundating my loved ones by being like, what do you think of this yarn? Do you think this color would suit me? Do you think that I would look good in a balaclava? And um, that's too much. So instead, I subject you guys to that. So it's been almost two months since I've last recorded. It is November 26th. The last time I recorded was like October 7th for a podcast. And um, I'm frankly overwhelmed by the prospect of filming this. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. The sun is shining. We have some natural light for the first time in a million years here in Ottawa. And I am going to show you what I show you. We're going to talk about what we talk about and we're going to have a grand old time. I had a lot of um, unexpected urgent family stuff go on since I last recorded and then, you know, work to catch up on, school to catch up on. It's been a busy season. I don't particularly want to go into the details, but it's been a little while, but I have been knitting throughout and crafting and doing all sorts of things. And so there's a lot of material and I hope you guys enjoy. I, I, I've missed this and I'm really looking forward to hopefully getting back in the swing of things. And yeah, yeah, I really like podcasting. So I'm excited to be back. A couple of administrative notes before we continue. I saw recently, well recently, maybe a month ago, High Fiber Knits talked about maybe now instead of talking about my measurement or talking about our measurements, beginning of videos, putting them in the down bar below. So for people who find that very useful, that information when I'm talking about garments, fit, sizing, etc., is available to you to help conceptualize what it is that I'm talking about. And if it's deeply unhelpful to you, you don't have to know, you don't have to deal with it. And yeah, really glad that someone reached out to Emily, talked about why this might be a better option and that I can incorporate this into my videos as well. Uh, second administrative note, for a while I was thinking about doing a fast, mostly free, mostly fun gift knitting idea video. I don't think I'm going to do that anymore, but I did create a Ravelry bundle with a little over 60 different, mostly free, but not all free, mostly fast, mostly scrappy gift patterns. Um, and that will be linked in the description box below as well. That'll be, I guess, my little gift to you guys. In there, there are some fast hats, some fast headbands, mittens, pillow covers, all sorts of like Christmas ornaments or coasters or soft toys, baby clothes, the like. I had a lot of fun putting it together. I love the idea of being able to share like something that might be helpful to you guys. I live to be helpful, so. That's there if you want it, but no pressure if you don't. And <clears throat> do I have any other administrative notes? Um, no. So let's talk about knitting. I'm really excited. Okay, I'm really happy to be back. This is good. This is good. I needed this. My first finished object is a heavily modified cumulus blouse by Petite Knit. And I knit this in Noro Kakigori in... I'm blanking on the name of the colorway but it's the it's this one it's blue they all look pretty different so if you look at this yarn on any retailer you'd be able to quickly tell which one it is but i'm going to stand up and show you now this is what it looks like and some of the modifications that i made are a lot of pretty significant waist shaping i might have done some arm shaping Yes, I did do sleeve shaping as well. And I knit this at a different gauge and on a different needle size because I started at the recommended gauge and needle size. And I thought it was just a little bit too loose, especially since this is kind of a single ply yarn and seemed a little bit delicate when I was working with it. So I went down one needle size to I'm pretty sure four. And I really, really, really like the fabric and the drape and the garment that has come out of that. I love this. I haven't been wearing it because it's been too cold, but I did wear this the two weeks I was with my father in South Florida and it was so perfect. And this garment 
I understand the hype around it. It's such a wonderful basic. I really enjoyed the, the raglan and the shaping for the neckline. It's beautiful. It's classic. I personally found it really good. A lot was going on and I don't want to think knitting. And I will be making a cumulus tee using some stash wild silk that I got from Color Mart a few weeks ago to make a cumulus tee in the spring. Some other modifications that I made because I changed the gauge was I think a lot of people said to size down for this pattern because it had a lot of ease and the cumulus blouse is not meant to be a summer pattern like this. It's meant to be knit with two strands of mohair held together, which is very different than what I was doing. And you need to kind of account for these or you don't, I don't mean to be prescriptive, but it's wise to kind of account for the difference in fiber and material and use when you're knitting a pattern and doing yarn substitutions, which I always do. I don't think I've ever knit anything in the recommended yarn, but I knew I wanted a very summery blouse because I've said this a thousand times, but I don't have summer clothes and I can knit them myself and then knit stuff that I did make and the summer clothes that I did make for myself this summer were the ones that I wore a lot. So the gauge was off, but long story short, people said to size down. So I knit the first size based on the recommendation to size down, but then because my gauge is a little bit tight, I was very consciously trying it on a lot and I knit then a few extra raglan increases and I think a couple extra neckline increases in order to give myself what I really enjoy as a fit, but a little bit between the first and second sizes instead. And then because I only had the one ball of Noro Kakigori and I had no intention of buying another one, I did a lot of really aggressive, not really aggressive, but I did a lot of body shaping for the first about five inches of this. Every two inches, I would decrease by four, maybe every one inch. Yeah, every one and a half, two inches, I would decrease by four stitches until I think I had reduced it by like, I think at the very least 20. And then just knit straight in order to get a very, like a close fit summer top and also make the yarn last as long as possible. When I got to a length that I knew would hit at the top of my, the jean shorts I live in all summer, I stopped, did the bind off, and then I did the neckline bind off, and then I weighed the amount of yarn I had left, split it in two, and nipped the sleeves. And I'm really happy with this kind of like long sleeve just at the elbow. And I did some decreasing, not super aggressive, but just to kind of keep that narrow fit, I'm thrilled with the final object. I love it. And like I said, I'm going to be knitting a cumulus tee to get a very similar effect, but a thinner fabric and a more lightweight garment because the cumulus tee, basically what I did for the cumulus blouse was modify it to make it very similar to a cumulus tee to begin with. I used a summery yarn. The cumulus tee has a lot less positive ease than the cumulus blouse and I went for a fit with a lot less positive ease and it has these kind of short sleeves that go just past or to the elbow and that's what I did. I am really happy with this and I think I would get a lot of wear out of a cumulus tee as well. So excited to cast that on in May. Uh, next, what else did I do? I knit myself a hat using the Knitting for Olive leftovers from my Cargill because I had quite a, ooh, my hair. I had quite a bit left over. So I knit a Better Now Beanie by Louis Kate Makes, which is one of my favorite hat patterns, um, except I modified it to not have the pico on either end of the brim because I don't, I really, I've been in a winter accessories mood and phase. I guess that's what my sock mojo has transformed into as of late. I really like the way that these yarns play together and I wanted to see what Knitting for Olive knit up in plain stockinette and at a different gauge than the Cargill because the Cargill was knit, it, I think pretty sure the gauge is um, seven, no, 19 stitches in four inches. And that's kind of loose for me and my comfort for a DK. Of course, having the mohair really um, bulks it out and makes it nice. And I really like the Cargill, but if I was to knit a plain stockinette sweater, I don't think I would, I would want, in a DK, I would probably want 20 inches. 
And this is knit on 3.75 millimeter needles. And I think this is a 22 or 23 stitch gauge for the hat. And it's three layers of brim. I like the decreases. I think they're, you can tell I have not woven in a single end, but I like the way that the decreases look. I shortened the top a little bit because I wanted to, and that's, I, I prefer a bit more of a closer fitting hat. And for the brim layer that sits on my ears, I dropped the strand of mohair and knit with the two strands of the merino held together. And this is, the merino is soft rose and the mohair I'm pretty sure is dusty rose. And I have to take a couple minutes at some point and just sew down the brim because it's kind of flopping all over and the rib is showing underneath. But I personally think this is a very underrated hat pattern. I think it's cute, functional. It's all the way from like toddler to adult large sizes. It has optional increases and in shaping if you have voluminous hair and or like curls or something that you don't want to be squashed by a hat. And I think it's really nice. I'm sorry that I keep touching my hair so much. I'm still getting used to having it. But I really, really like it. This was very, very enjoyable to knit. I like Lily Kate's pattern writing style a lot. I like the way that this turned out. I like the yarns and this looks good with my coats. So second finished object for me. Beyond those two objects, this autumn has been characterized by a whole lot of gift knitting because um, I decided to do a lot of gift knitting and a friend of mine's having a baby and so I've been knitting stuff for that baby and the first thing I have to show you again this requires a certain amount of finishing I haven't woven in ends and this band here needs some I'm gonna put some little snap buttons here. But this is the Baby Aosta sweater, knit by, nope, designed by the Knit Pearl Girl, AKA Sophie Hemmings. And I knit this in leftover Barocco Vintage DK, which is a super wash wool and acrylic and polyamide blend in the color Twilight. And I had a lot left over after in a huge snarled tangled mess after I knit my boyfriend an anchor sweater boyfriend edition in this color for our anniversary. And my friends came over to visit. They detangled that yarn. And then I knit this little sweater for our other friend's baby. So I'm really excited. This is knit. I'm pretty sure I did the size Three months but then I did a lot of extra de increasing and lengthening in order to get it bigger because I was texting my mom look at how cute this baby sweater is and she said very kindly um Rachel a wool sweater for a, a newborn is not the wildly the most wildly useful thing um in the world so I did some stuff to make it bigger and then I knit this I find Sophie to be a much tighter knitter than I am the designer so I knit this at a gauge that I knew was really nice for this yarn because of the anchor sweater that I knit. The anchor sweater and the Baby Aosta are both knit on four millimeter needles, I think. And I knew that my gauge with this yarn on full four millimeter needles was about 20 inches, sorry, 20 stitches per four inches. And the Baby Aosta is supposed to be 22 stitches per inch. So instead of going down a needle size to get the gauge specified in the pattern, I knit at a looser gauge on the specified needles to make this again bigger. So overall, this is closer to like a four or five, maybe even six month size for the baby. And I'm hoping that means it's a little bit more useful. And if not, it was, it got some yarn that was annoying me out of stash and was really, 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 really fun to knit. It was so satisfying and it's so cute. And I'm going to sew on some snaps here so that it can come on and off really easily. And that my friend, and her partner 
do not have to be fiddling with buttons at like two in the morning trying to change and feed their son who is due in January. And this was really good. I went through a big baby knitting phase earlier this fall because this is just so freaking cute. And I really like the Aosta stitch pattern. I have the grown up adult Aosta and Sophie just released a new version or an update to it with short row shaping in the back and some optional sleeve shaping, which are two things that I would really like in the original Aosta. So I might still knit that. I really like the look of it. And I really, I never get sick of Andalusian stitch. I never get sick of knitting this. I love a good knit pearl texture. However, I found that there were so many pages of text in this pattern, but then I wish that there had been more schematics in terms of like arm length and yoke depth and things like that. Because as I was modifying this a little bit on the fly, which was on me, that would have been really useful information, but alas, it is a baby sweater, it'll be cute. And my friend is the kind of person who really, really appreciates handmade stuff. So I'm excited to give this to her for her first child. And baby knits are just so great for like acrylic or superwash scraps or cotton, like fantastic. The second thing I knit for this baby is this sweater, which is the good old raglan. Unfortunately, I'm currently blanking on the name of the designer, but everything will be linked down below. And I knit this in the one year size or like 12 to 14 months because he's due in January and I imagine they're going to get a lot of newborn stuff so I wanted something for his second winter and this is using Stash Bernat Baby something from our mutual very good friend who wanted it out of her stash and this is yarn that I thrifted. It's a Lion brand cotton, mercerized cotton. Thank you again to the person in the comment section who identified this and told me exactly what it was. And I knit this basically to pattern, except I changed the stripes. The stripes are only supposed to be on the body and they're supposed to be a lot thinner, but I knew that I didn't have enough of the gray main color to work that. And I had a lot of more of this. And, but just the white and the gray seemed a little bit blah for a baby. Like, I want him to be dressed in fun things. And even though this is just what I had, I added that other stripe to make it a little bit more fun, but really satisfying, quite potato chippy because the rounds are so fast and then there's a stripe and then this was different and it was nice to get this yarn out of not just my stash but my friend Carolyn's stash because she knit herself a pair of mittens in these colors like five years ago and it's just been hanging out in her house ever since. So these two sweaters were a lot of fun for me to knit, but it kind of feels like a, a bit of a group effort because our other friend Sarah spent, I'm not kidding, like nine hours untangling this yarn and she volunteered for that. It was such a horrific mess. And I said, oh, there's a great yarn that I think would be lovely for our other friend's baby, but it's in such an awful tangle. It's gonna take me forever to do it. And then Sarah said, I'm coming to Ottawa. Can I untangle it? I would love to. And I didn't believe her, but she apparently did want to. Whenever we had downtime, she said, hey, can I go untangle that yarn some more? And so, this was like nine hours of untangling by Sarah and Carolyn. This yarn is from Carolyn. This yarn I thrifted with Carolyn, Sarah, and Casa. And they'll be delivering it to our other friend. So this kind of feels a little bit like a group effort. And that's nice because it makes me feel a little bit less creepy about all the things I'm knitting for this baby. Next on the gift knits train, my roommate Sophie's birthday is in a week. And I got this yarn sponsored. This was, this was given to me for free in exchange for an honest review um, by Hobie in the spring. And this is their Hobie unicorn yarn in the color, I wanna say gracious. And it's this, it's a merino nylon blend and I'm pretty sure it's not super wash or they tell you not to wash it in the machine with these speckles of purple and bright yellow and fluorescent pink. And as soon as I got this, I thought that would be perfect for Sophie because pink, lilac, and yellow are her colors. That's what she loves. She loves brights and she loves things like this. So at first, I'll show you what it looks like in a cake as well. So I have quite a bit left. So here's what it looks like caked up. I did a bad job kicking it. Like look at this mountain compared to here, but here you go. But 
I was originally knitting and anybody who watched my little multi-craft vlog from a couple weeks ago will be familiar with this because I did like spend some time spiraling about it and then I ripped out the project I was first knitting just on camera and originally I was going to knit Sophia Musselboro in this yarn because I really wanted to use the Musselboro pattern. It seems perfect for gifts and this is so perfect for my roommate. And then I realized my roommate doesn't wear hats. And then I found a little little sly way to slip that into conversation and say, oh, are you gonna wear a hat? It's pretty cold out today. And she said, no, I don't wear hats. I just don't find them super useful. And so then I panicked because I'd spent a week working on a hat for her and her birthday is approaching and like, it's my gift knitting marathon. I don't have time for course corrections. And so I panicked, ripped that out and cast on these mitts. So these are the soccer mitts which is a free pattern on Ravelry for fingerless mitts because my roommate is a big cyclist. She is Belgian from the Flemish part and she bikes everywhere. And I have been told by many people that fingerless mitts are good for cyclists because it doesn't even have to be that cold for it to be quite cold biking. And so I whipped these up and I'm feeling much better about it. I. Did I modify these at all? No, I just added twisted rib because I thought that would be more of like a look. And I knit these pretty much exactly to pattern. And they used, for this, pair exactly 30 grams of fingering weight yarn. If you look on Ravelry, because this is a free pattern, there are so many useful notes and modifications and lengthening and, and all different things that people have done but this is a very very fast gift in my opinion i knit the first one in a day and a half second one took a little bit longer because i was alternating this with a pair of color work mitts also on tiny nine inch circulars and my hands were getting kind of cramped so and the other pair was my priority because at this point i was very close to the finish line for these but they're very soft they have been blocked you can see a lot of ends but um, all of them are woven in. I just need to snip them. I just was waiting until after I blocked them to do so. But this yarn, I will say, I think this is my second favorite of the ones Hobby has sent me thus far. My favorite being their Baby Cotton Organic, which is an inexpensive, GOT certified organic, beautiful color range, super, super soft, great garment cotton if you're ever in the market. And again, they're not, I, I, that's my honest opinion and I've bought it in the past and I will buy it again regardless of the fact that they sent it to me for a review. This is the second favorite. I think this is pretty popular in general and it goes on sale quite often. I think it might even be on sale right now. And yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do with the other 70 grams of this though. I'm currently looking for, maybe I'll make a hat for my step grandma, Mary in this because you know what, I'll get to that in like another minute, but my grandfather suggested pink, but I do think this is a little bit much for her. Like she's not this, you know, fluorescent speckle kind of gal. But if you're looking for a last minute gift, I you could bang these out in a weekend if you needed to. I don't even think it would be that difficult. And it's pretty easy to lengthen, shorten, whatever. It's a free pattern and it's a good one. It's very clear, well-written, I'm a big fan. And I'm excited to give these to my roommate on her birthday. So that is my second gift knit finished object. This is very, very soft. And I'm hoping that even though it's merino, the 25% nylon content will give it that strength that's good for biking when you're like gripping the handles and, and doing all the things that people who bike do. So I feel like I really, I, I hope I'm not speeding through these in a way that's unpleasant. I feel I, like I need to catch you guys up so that moving forward podcast can be like a good length, a good amount of stuff to show you, not frazzled. And before my accidental hiatus, I was in my head, I hadn't announced this, but I was like, okay, let's see if we can do a twice a month or every two week more or less podcasting schedule because that seems more manageable to film and edit. And then I was gone for seven and a half weeks, but I have some ideas for videos, like, you know, relaxed ones, moving forward, heading into winter, and I, I'm going to see if we can do every two weeks. Please don't hold me to that, but once this is, including podcasts, I'm not going to stop doing podcasts. I just like to switch things up a little bit, 
and I will not be doing vlogmas. I recorded a vlog recently and that was fun, but like I thought, it's kind of a lot of work to edit. And I also don't do interesting things very often. I don't live an aesthetic life and I'm kind of, cons like I don't want people to know what I, I don't want people to know where I go on a day-to-day -day basis and like what I'm up to. Like I don't want people to be able to find me. So that's that on that. <laughs> My next finished object I finished last night and I am so excited by, but I made my brother a pair of, I think they're called Stockbridge mitts, but it's a free felted mitt pattern. Because if you watched my vlog, you will know that I'm now fixated by um, felting or fulling things, specifically like intentionally felting my knitwear, which is making boiled wool is the technical term. And technically it's called fulling and not felting, but for ease of reference, we're gonna call it felting in these videos. I made my brother two mittens per his specifications. And they are mostly felted. I didn't go as hard on the bottom because it mattered less. And this is knit in deep stash worsted wool from a company that I don't really buy from, which is a shame because they make nice wool, but then they did bad things with their business practices. And I've had these two skeins of worsted in stash since February or March of 2020. And my brother saw Nathan's fingerless mitts the other day and said, oh, maybe I would like a pair of those. And so then he said, actually, maybe full mittens, but I just don't want them to have thumbs because of his phone. Like he wants to be able to text and, and not have to take off the whole mitten to use his phone. And I thought, okay, I can do that very easily if I felt them. And each one of these individually took me a day of knitting. I don't even mean like a weekend day. Like both of these were work days. I cast the first one on and it's 40 stitches around. I can tell you all of this because it's a free pattern. Uh, it'll be linked down below and it's in the gift knits bundle. And I cast it on in the first round of my lunch break on Thursday and then put it aside because work has been very hectic and then picked it back up again on 4.30 when I was just doing phone calls for work and winding down my day. And I was done by bedtime at 11, woven my ends and went to bed. That is how fast it was because I knit this on, the pattern specifies six millimeter needles, which, is US, which are US 10s and worsted weight because the point is to make a big loose fabric that you can then felt. So I did that. I added an extra row before you start the thumb increases. I added more, I followed another Ravelers, Ravelry users modifications to make it a rounded mitten top instead of a pointed one. I added a few more rows here and here and the stripes are not specified in the pattern, but overall these still did felt to what I would call an adult medium and I've got pretty small hands and these fit like my finger, my the top of my middle finger is right here. So these are gonna be too small for my brother almost certainly, but that's fine because I sent him the first photo the photo of the first unfelted mitten because I wanted to get his confirmation that this was in fact his vision and what he wanted before I felted it because felting is an irreversible process. And then he said, oh, I really like those. I don't like that you spoiled it, but I understand why you had to send it to me. And, oh, is it possible to make them fingerless? And I thought I would prefer to him to have, I would prefer for him to have like proper mittens because it's really cold where we live. But I thought, okay, why don't I just felt them? And then if they're too small, which they, I knew that was a possibility, it's always a possibility with felting, I'll just cut off the tip. They are in fact too small. Those are my fingers right there. And so I'm just gonna go snip snip. Just gonna cut that off and felt it down with my new needle felting tool. And that is a very, very exciting fingerless mitt. I did not have enough of the solid green, which was the color that my brother asked for, to make him the full pair of mitts. And so I sent him a photo of the light green to say, that's probably too light for you. That's probably not to your taste. And he said, no, I actually maybe like that more. I would be okay with the full pair of mittens and the light if, you, if that's easier for you. And I said, I actually don't have enough for either pair. So I sent him a bunch of ideas. Like what if I did the, the cuffs in the light and then the, the main hand in the dark because that way most people aren't gonna see the cuffs, they'll be in his jacket. He said, no, he said stripes would be good. So I was watching Kendra of the Balanced Skein review all of her hand knit jumpers. And she said that her favorite had this kind of like varsity stripe pullover stripe 
on the collar and I think maybe the sleeves. I liked the look of that. So I did that for the cuffs and then I did kind of these thick rugby stripes for the actual mittens. And I was quite nervous that this wouldn't be my brother's style. He has, I think, a strong sense of personal style. He knows what he likes and I was afraid that this wouldn't be it. So I sent him that photo and he said, no, I like it. Don't rip it back. And he likes it. It's kind of like retro sporty with the rugby stripe and the varsity stripe. So hopefully he gets a lot of wear out of these. These will be warm. These are, I think, thick without being too thick. Like they're not gonna be bulky. And this was a two day project. This was two days of knitting. And then the second day of knitting, I, so I have, I'm very lucky to have a washing machine, but it's a front loading, not a top loading. And that's kind of a problem for when you're trying to felt things because you can't stop and check once it's in, it's in. So I did this the old fashioned way. I followed the Chemnitz bucket felting tutorial. And I also read the techknitting.com page on intentionally felting your knitwear. And I was aware that this was probably gonna take me about 45 minutes and it did take me about 45 minutes of sitting with a bucket, with these in a bucket and a bunch of other things in there to increase friction, stirring it with a spatula. And then my roommate and I watched an episode of something and I kept adding more boiling water and dish soap and then occasionally putting these in cold water to shock them and really agitate them. And they turned out quite nicely. However, just be aware that if you don't have a, a top loading washer, you might have to do that or just risk it. My mother said, what happened? Like, could you just boil it on the stove? That seems faster and more efficient. And this bled a lot, even in the bucket with like almost boiling water, not consistently boiling water. And so I was concerned about dye leakage into our pots and our cookware. But if you guys have done this before, and you have insight on whether or not boiling is more effective and safe, please let me know because that would be easier. I think my mom is right in the fact that it would be easier. I just, maybe I'll get like a dye specific pot. Let me know what you think about that. So these are the Stockbridge mittens. If you were to make these for a man, I would maybe cast on an extra two stitches or use a bulky weight instead of a worsted slash Aran and then lengthen this bit before felting. But great pattern, felt is magic, this is really cool, I'm pretty happy. Next, a knit frog a sweater using some scrappy Amano Chosky sock yarn that I have in the color Brookstone. I think he looks amazing. I sort of followed a tiny sweater pattern, but then I did different stitch counts and different, I just kept trying it on him until it worked. Again, I'm sorry if you watch my vlog and this is repetitive to you, but this was immensely satisfying. I needed a win and I got it. And I love him. And now he's cozy. Ooh. And now he's cozy. Frog has a sweater. Okay, I was getting a little chilly, so I switched into a sweater. I didn't knit this. I thrifted it, though. And it is my second best thrift knit of all time. It is 100% cashmere from Scotland and from a brand called Ballotine and I think it makes my eyes look nice and it's super super comfy for not quite the dead of winter but right before and after the dead of winter so in a sweater now and I found my other finished objects okay I like I said I'm, I'm going through a bit of a, a, a felting phase and I was doing a lot of it's getting cold out nesting. And so I went through my closets, you know, did the thing where you switch out your warm stuff and bring out your cold stuff. And this brought me to a couple sweaters that I wanted to give away and a couple more that I wanted to repurpose. So I gave away my Bina V-neck that I knit in Drops Air to a friend as well as a store-bought old American Apparel cotton cable knit to a friend who has no sweaters because I wasn't really wearing them and didn't really want them and I asked if she wanted them and she said yes. So I gave away a couple sweaters that cleared up a lot of space and made me feel good about myself because there's less stuff in my house. And then I got to thinking and there were two sweaters, my first ever knit sweater and a sweater that I crocheted in very early 2020 before I took up knitting for realsies again that were large and just kind of never being worn taking up space in my house and my mom's house. So I felted them. 
Here is the sweater that I knit myself. Or what's left of it. Uh, before I felted it, it was about 44 inches across bust circumference. Now it's not. And then the crochet sweater I turned into these little balls. I will spare people who watch the vlog the full rundown, but basically felt dryer balls are, in my opinion, a very good gift, and I really wanted to try making them so I could have some for my house and then also give them as gifts. This used to be beige, closer to this, but then having run it through multiple runs of hot water with this, this dye leaked everywhere and then made these kind of pink. And I made about nine of these. I'm gonna make a couple more because I then also got, I felted these and I really enjoyed it, but it was my first time doing this kind of thing. And I'm a little bit concerned about these parts of the balls that didn't felt as evenly. And so I talked to a bunch of people and also read all of your comments on my vlog. And I got this needle felting tool that you just use to needle felt. Um, decor or any sort of things that you want to needle felt and I'm just going to the rest of those into place. Um, some of you very rightly pointed out that if this leached onto this then it might leach onto stuff in the dryer as well and so oh shout out to Myra it was so nice to meet you in the knit cafe if you're still watching. I I think it's funny that we were both in a knitting store that we're never in and we ran into each other, but hi. Um, and met a viewer named Myra in the Knit Cafe in Toronto, which is my first time in that knitting store ever because it moved a little bit closer to the part of town that I'm in sometimes and I wanted to check it out. And they had interesting stock and I think I'm gonna go back to buy a skein of Brooklyn Tweed to make knit, uh, Nathan mittens for our anniversary in the new year. And while I was there, I ran into a viewer and this viewer pulled out of their bag another frog in a sweater, which was so much fun to see. I was quite excited about this, but we have matching frogs and matching sweaters, and that is wonderful. But the point of all of this is, is Myra's the one who commented saying, do you think those are going to leach in the dryer? I think they will. I think that was an astute comment. I've spoken to my mother who has felted dryer balls and she said that that has happened with hers before. However, mild color, so it doesn't matter. So these are the ones we're gonna use. And I have a lot more of this beige yarn. So the way that I did this is I cut up old sweater, wrapped it around, secured it, put it in pantyhose, knotted, and then ran it through the washer and dryer on hot a couple times. That's not a definitive list of all the things you have to do. Follow a tutorial, please do not just do it based on what I just said. And I think these will be fine because it's such a mild color. These we will be turning into Christmas ornaments for my friend who is a Christmas tree and celebrates Christmas. And I'm going to needle felt these further. And then we're gonna have a fun craft night where we needle felt like pretty designs onto them and my friend will have baubles. So that'll be really nice. Another one of my friends wants a couple of these anyway for dryer balls because she says she'll just use them with her dark loads because she wants to experiment. Okay, I'm also just going to make her maybe a couple of the beige ones because I found in my stash leftover just plain beige yarn and I looked it up and you can also make these using spare yarn. It doesn't have to be a sweater or existing fabric. You can do this with a store-bought sweater, you can do this with a hand-knit sweater, or you can do this with just plain yarn. So I think I have enough to make two or three dryer balls with just the beige yarn. And also other beige yarns, actually, looking around and thinking about it, I have enough to make several more dryer balls, which will be nice. So I'm going to make more of those and try the just a ball of yarn method instead, secure the end with a crochet hook, put it in a sock, and then just keep felting those slowly with each of my loads of laundry. And more fun with felt abounds. The reason why you see these two cutouts from the sweater is I just wanted to see other things I could do with felt. And in the comment section of my vlog, some of you guys had such fantastic ideas. I love the idea of a felted pillow cover. I love the idea of a felted boot, uh, boot, boot insert and so many other things. But my roommate is going to use the last of the red to make 
some type of hanging garland with the felt and our new pen needle tool. I am going to make coasters and pot holders out of this and then embroider them with some yarn also that I reclaimed in that vlog. And that will be a nice break from all the frantic gift knitting because I'm really trying hard to listen to my body, stop when I feel fatigue or pain, vary my crafts, A, because it's so much fun to learn new skills and, and understand fiber more and hone new abilities, and also because if my hands are cramping from too much knitting, we're gonna take a break. And it's a lot easier to take a break if I have something else to do and it doesn't feel like I'm stopping, forcing myself to stop knitting, I'm just starting a new activity instead. The reason why I haven't made a lot of progress on these is because I'm so preoccupied with gift knitting and anytime I'm not gift knitting, I feel a little guilty. And also because I just got new scissors and this is really thick because this was a bulky weight sweater before I felted it down. This was Drops Andes. Also, alpaca felts very, very, very well in case anyone's wondering. This is very thick. I just got new kitchen scissors and I don't want to dull them immediately cutting out felt coasters. So this will be probably when I have a little bit more freedom to experiment and also once my finals are done. Because right now I have, actually what I'm doing after this is going to a cafe to work on final projects with a friend of mine, which will be really, really nice in the sun and to socialize and to start working on my little thing. But also it's an incredibly hectic time at work. And so once all these different pressures abate a little bit, I'm gonna learn some embroidery and embroider some coasters. But those are my other finished objects. Honestly, I have a couple others, but I'll tell you about them in the next video because, because we're at almost 50 minutes and I haven't gotten to whips yet. So whips, uh, number one, I think my currently oldest whip, not including the crochet afghan. I said in my last podcast, if I wasn't done that blanket by the end of October, I requested that you guys yell at me in the comment section. I, I requested that you guys admonish and scold me. But then I was unexpectedly away from Ottawa for half of October and that just wasn't feasible. And now it is the gift knitting extravaganza. So now the goal is to finish that by the end of 2020. I started a sock for myself in October. I was going to do the falling leaves sock along hosted by the earth tones girl and i started i got like decently far into my first ever pair of toe up socks which is the acorn sock by amanita knits which i am knitting in this simply stunning shade of sock yarn in the color cabernet by Artful Bell, which is a Canadian dyer. My mother got me this. I love it. And I think it knits up really nicely. This is my first two millimeter sock. And I really, really like the color. I like the stitch pattern. I'm enjoying the toe up sock. And I chose the sock pattern because it's a toe up sock, which I would like to learn how to do. And I think it's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. I think it's really cute and whimsical, but also the heel is a heel flap and gusset. It's just in reverse. And I like the way that those fit. And I'm a little bit away from starting the increases for the heel. And the reason why I haven't gotten there yet is because I'm, the theme of most of my whips for me right now are, but I haven't been working on this because of giftness. So this will be, it's no longer a um, start of fall sock, but this kind of like moody red also feels very deep winter. And so this will be some winter break knitting for me. And I'm looking forward to returning to it because this is really soft. When I was working on this quite like with actual intention and focus, I kept thinking like, oh, what if I also got some more and like made myself a little hat or, oh, what if I knit myself a sweater in this because I'm just so in love with this color. But, then I have I have several sweater quantities of yarn, and that will maybe just have to wait until next year. But the Acorn Sock by Amanita Knits. I like this pattern. It comes in four sizes. It's interesting enough to have some interest. You can't really see, I'm sorry, in this light, the pattern. Um, and also most of the pizzazz is actually on the, the foot. No, not the foot. On the, the, the leg and the ankle. I just, I've been otherwise preoccupied. My next whip is a baby sock. 
These are the, I think they're the perfect newborn socks. No, maybe they're just newborn socks. They're by Kate Atherley. It's a free pattern for really sweet ribbed socks for a baby. I, these do not take very long at all, but because they don't take very long at all, I know I can do them at the last minute before I meet my friend who's having a baby. And so I've been putting these off in favor of, I'm gonna just do the magic loop thing because trying to hold onto these needles is really annoying me. Um, because I know these can be done at the last minute, I have been putting them off in favor of my more intense gift knits. But how freaking cute is that? Adorable. And I think that because it's so stretchy and it's all rib, it'll stay on the little baby's foot and it will maybe accommodate the baby growing. I'm happy to be able to do this in red. Ideally, I will do another pair in green before I give them so I can give them like a, a nice little set because the two sweaters are just so like, they're, I think in my opinion, very, very cute, but they're also a little dull. I would like to give them something more interesting and more colorful and not just, oh, you're having a boy? Do you want some blue? Do you want some boring blue knits? So some cute little red and green socks and maybe a hat if possible. But you know what? I, I have so much on the needles right now that like, if we just get the one pair of socks in, that's okay too. Do recommend though, they're really cute, they're really fast, they're really fun. Oh, this is a secret. This is a secret whip that I cannot show you because the recipient is watching this video. However, I will say, Grey Owl Knits makes some beautiful stranded color work patterns. I recommend. I learned of this designer through one of you guys. When I did my giveaway for a thousand subscribers back in February, March, I asked for pattern or designer recommendations that you feel are underrated. Someone said Grey Owl Knits and the Wee Field Mouse socks. So I went a look in and I'm mighty impressed. I am a big fan of this designer now. Beautiful, beautiful color work. Socks, mittens, hats, cowls in really cute graphic whimsical patterns. And I find the designer's writing style to be so clear, the perfect amount of information, good charts. I'm a fan. So that's what I'll say on that. I will show you guys once the I'll film some film a clip with it and show you guys once the recipient has received her mittens. But in the meantime, recommend Grey Owl Knits. I unraveled a old cashmere sweater of my father's with his permission actually with his delight he was so in favor of this because this is kind of my dad likes to take things apart and then put them back together he likes building models and modifying things and seeing if he can make things work and so when he offered me a couple or three of his old sweaters to uh, reclaim for the yarn. I obviously jumped at the chance of being able to work with some free cashmere. And the other two were like cob, like they were thread, they were like this. They were, it wasn't strands of yarn, it was like cobweb. So those went to my mom and my brother. But in my vlog, I ripped out the sweater and I have since started a hat for my boyfriend. This is a two by two rib hat. I'm knitting it on 3.25 millimeter needles because I'm holding this two strands. So it's kind of like a light DK. And this is buttery soft to work with. It feels so soft in my hands. And I'm knitting the head sock pattern, which is a free pattern for a two by two rib hat with some really clean, neat decreases. And I'm also going to knit myself a hat in this yarn I'm going to knit something for my brother that i haven't decided yet because I, th I think it would be really nice for both of us to have something from our father's sweater and it's just such beautiful soft yarn i think this will be really nice i'm hoping to maybe have enough left over for some type of like neck warmth accessory for myself maybe a cowl or one of those like terrazzo neck style like dickies to tuck in to coats for warmth 
I love the look of the terrazzo neck. However, I don't want to do that much twisted rib. And I would have to like, I think triple or quadruple this to get gauge. And I don't want to use all of it up for that. So we'll see. But it was really fun to learn how to reclaim yarn from a commercial sweater. I, it was thrilling in my opinion. And again, I really like feeling like I can grow in my knitting and fiber adjacent skills and abilities. And it's really, really nice to have now like a men's sweater quantity of yarn to make into new and beautiful things because that sweater was sitting in a cupboard for nine years unused, magically managed to avoid moths. And now it is being appreciated in the form of a nice soft hat. I really like the head sock pattern so far. It's free, so I can tell you this. And the designer tells us it's pretty easy to modify to for different gauges. It's meant for a fingering weight. I went up a couple needle sizes to fit this kind of sport um, yarn weight that I'm using. You just change it, the stitch count that you start with, just making sure it's still a multiple of 16. And if you look through the Ravelry project pages, you'll see all sorts of examples of people changing the weight and still getting a nice hat. The only thing is it's all in two by two rib. So this has been my daytime meeting knitting because it's so dark, I can't really see it when it's not this level of light, but it's straightforward, good beginner project, good gift knit. I'm a fan. Another whip that's pretty much been on the back burner since October is my Luz cardigan by Atelier Amélie who is a French designer who mercifully also releases her patterns in English, which is such a boon because I love her style. But a lot of her sweaters feel like dupes for that um, bougie French brand Cezanne. And this is the Luz cardigan, L-U-Z or Z, that I'm knitting in some special yarn that I got myself a month and a half ago to celebrate a health milestone I recently achieved. And this is a pretty straightforward, like crew neck, rounded collar, raglan, plain stockinette cardigan with an I cord button band that you knit at the same time as the rest of the sweater. And the original is knit in two strands of mohair lace weight held together. I'm doing this in one strand of sport weight wool. I'm really enjoying this pattern. In my head, this is unofficially my soon to be office cardigan. And this has not been getting a lot of attention because of the gift knits, but also because I started realizing I might not be working in an office next semester. I might be working just on campus and in my pajamas via Zoom or whatever. And I don't really need an office cardigan. So really there's no rush. Prioritize the gift knits. Now I do know I will be in an office next semester. So I'm re-energized to keep working on this, but this is undyed Canadian wool. I posted on my Instagram story in early October, does anyone have any Canadian fiber producers that they recommend? I would like to buy myself a special yarn to celebrate my health milestone. And someone recommended Small Bird Workshop. And I'm so glad that they did. So thank you again, because I love, love, love this. It is all from, mostly from a little sheep named Garcia, who lives on the Twin Oaks Fiber Farm. And Garcia is half Blue Face Lester and half Romney. And this yarn comes from him. And 65 of this yarn is that BFL Romney from Garcia. And 35% of it is polypay, which is a breed of yarn I only recently learned about when I bought this yarn from Alberta. So this is from Ontario and Alberta fiber wool. It was milled in Ontario at Wellington Fibers. And then undyed and sent to me by the lovely person behind Small Fiber Studios. So here's all of that information. It says here on the label that it's $30, but I think she changed her mind after writing these because I got them for 26 each or 24 and I bought three skeins. So this is going to be about a $72 sweater. And the beginning of this year, I wanted to buy a lot more Canadian and like especially local to me 
Canada's huge. So like, I don't even, this could be hundreds of kilometers away when I look at this fiber farm, I haven't looked. But I wanted more Canadian fiber, Canadian milled yarn. And I'm now at the end of the year starting to get around to that, but I'm in love with this. It is undyed. It is so soft. When I first got it, I was just kind of like walking around with it tucked in to the neckband of my sweater to see if I felt okay with this against my neck. And in the skein, it really does. Knit up in a fabric, it's a little bit scratchier because you have some of those hairs starting to pop right on out in that fuzz. But even then, like, this is not soft, but it's also not irritating, if that makes sense. Like, I don't feel this and feel, oh, this is so buttery, soft, and smooth the way that I do the cashmere from my father's old sweater. But at no point am I bothered by it, if that makes sense. I really like it, and I like that you have this natural gradient of yarn where you have, like, a little bit more shadow because some darker guard hairs got in there, and the gradient, not the gradient, the, the variety in the sheep's coat... And I bought a couple little dye kits, one in a burgundy, one in a little bit less than navy blue. And I really, I chose this color on purpose because I think it'll go really well with my office wardrobe, which is a lot of blues. I don't know why, but it turns out that like half of the stuff I wear to offices are like blue. I guess in my head, I think of that as a professional color, but, and stuff I guess I can thrift easily but I think this will go with all my blue stuff, all my blue blouses, but if I get tired of this, I can dye over it because it's untreated, undyed yarn, and I think this in a burgundy or a blue would also be beautiful, and because of that innate depth of color from the base yarn, I think it'll dye up in a really interesting way. So I don't have any intention of dyeing this anytime soon. I will have so many more questions to ask my mother about dyeing stuff before I do, but this really, I wanted a really special treat for being, for that celebration. And in this, I really got it. And I am eagerly following Small Fiber Workshop to see what other kinds of things they come up with because I really like that they give me access to all these like small fiber farms and different breeds and i've never worked with romney before and i've been really enjoying this so this is the lewis cardigan i'm knitting the second size and been finding it enjoyable i don't mind all the purling but i'm looking forward to the sleeves where i can just knit in the round and in my head i keep thinking that this will somehow be done by winter break even though i haven't been working on it like i don't it's not going to knit itself but i'm like oh yeah but i will have a cardigan by the new year and I'll just start and knit a sweater over winter break and then I'll have two, but like, how's that gonna happen if I'm not working on this? So I love the yarn, I love the pattern, hasn't been getting a lot of attention from me. I will say, I noticed the other day when I was going to find my four millimeter needles, I'm knitting this on a 3.75 because of the sport weight nature of this and what I wanted. And I, have over time become a looser knitter, which is good because I was originally a very tight knitter. However, I have not become a looser purler, and I think that is something I'm going to have to change later on. But I have a 3.75 on the knit side and a 4.5 on the purl side because that is the differential I need to get an even tension uh, knitting back and forth and to avoid rolling out. So that's how significantly my knit and purls very. My last work in progress is a test knit for Phoebe of Friday Knits. It is her Lost Tank, which is a, a high neck ribbed tank. And I like the pattern and I like knitting it and I like the yarn, but I don't think I like it for this project. Like this is so overwhelming to look at. I'm 
if I was not doing this as a test knit and I didn't have so many other deadlines, I would rip it back and knit it in another yarn. But right now the sunk cost fallacy is winning and I just want to get this done and provide Phoebe the feedback because I really love this color, but I think this really needs to be socks or knit at a much tighter gauge because right now to me, it just looks muddy. I think it's overwhelming. Like when I look at this, my brain cannot process it. Like my brain can't pick a color. It's just too confusing. But in the skein and in the cake, it looks in my opinion, quite pretty kind of mermaidy, and I think knit at a much tighter gauge, like at a 2.25 millimeter needle versus this is on three, or a two millimeter needle, you would have a few stitches in a row of each color, and that would be really beautiful. But here, like, it's just, I, maybe this will change when I have the finalized garment. I'm gonna try. And either way, this is probably going to be an undershirt anyway, so it like doesn't wildly matter, but I, I'm like, what is this? Like, I can't. What am I looking at? I am going to use some leftover, I think probably purple yarn for the neckline, for the collar, and for the, the sleeve edging when I get around to it to see if I can like almost provide a dominant color scheme to help my brain process this, but I don't really have high hopes for that. We'll see. And those are all my knitting projects for right now. I... I've missed you guys. <laughs> I have some acquisitions, but at this point we're already, we're already over an hour and I will maybe just talk about more in my next update. But one thing, I got this skein from, of mohair. What is this base? This is the Butterfly Kisses lace weight yarn in the color bottle green from Les Belles Bouclettes, which is one of the two Angora, commercial flocks of Angora yarn in the province of Ontario. And this is super local to me. It's about a 45 minute drive away in a town called Van Cleek Hill. And I met the woman who runs that farm and produces this yarn. Her name is Isabelle Pertigal, and this is 70% kid mohair, 20% wool, and 10% silk. And it's not like blown around a base, it's just mohair yarn. I've been very curious about this forever, but I their farm has not, normally you can visit the farm. You can visit the little goats and see their store and all these things, and then they hand dye the yarn and I got bottle green, which I just love. And this is 50 grams and 438 meters. It's a two ply. However, like I, I didn't want to buy this online, uh, but a friend and I went to the Ottawa Valley Weavers and Spinners Guild sale and exhibition last month or earlier this month. And I got to meet her and I was so, I loved that event. It was, I saw so many beautiful things. There were, little exhibits showing how you like you would make linen from flax to the prep to the spinning to the final fabric there were so many people spinning i saw some really beautiful needle felted stuff i saw some really beautiful woven pieces of art i saw so many wonderful things i am so impressed by the guild its members everyone was so kind to me my friend and i got the skein of yarn because again i'm trying to get more canadian local low carbon low impact stuff and this is even though i'm sometimes sensitive to mohair this is pretty soft in my opinion and i'm thinking i might make a shawl in this i would want to hold it with something else and i would want it to be more of a scarfy shawl than a shawl shawl like maybe not a full triangle maybe something more like long and skinny for warmth in the office but I'm quite pleased. So I think this is kind of my standout acquisition. This is the one I really want to share with you guys. Beyond that, I got when I visited my dad. So a year ago, I won a knit, -a -knit along gift card, or a gift card from a knit along I had done. It was $50 to shop La Mercerie in the United States. And I finally used it when I went to go visit my dad and ordered from them a sweaters quantity of uh, De Rome Natura Ulysse in the color Poivre et Sal, which is pepper and salt, 
and I'm going to use this to probably make a Pippin cardigan. Not a nope, Pippin sweater. I'm looking forward to that, but haven't been able to cast on because I have too much going on. So this was $55 US for a sweater's quantity. It's a sport weight and it's 100% French Merino. Yeah, which I'm pretty sure is just Rambouillet, but maybe it's just French Merino. But I had a $50 gift card, so I paid $5 American for this plus shipping, which is $7 Canadian. So quite pleased with that. And in terms of knitting plans, I would like to finish my mother's first gift mitten by the 1st of, uh, of December. I'd like to finish Nathan's hat roughly around then. I am hoping to finish my brother's pair of Magic Toadstool gift socks by the second or third week of December before I leave to go back home and hang out with him. And I need to knit my step grandma a hat in probably pink or green, but I'm not too concerned about that at this given moment. I'll like it'll happen. So that is a speed catch up of what I have been up to and what I have been making. And I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm hoping that now I'm back in the swing of things and we'll be catching up on a regular basis again. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around. I know this was a bit of a, a hectic all over the place one, but I'm really glad to be talking with you guys again. So I'll see you guys again soon. I have a couple other fun gift, I not gift, fun, can you tell what's on my mind? Fun video ideas planned, some 2023 knitting planning, some fun winter patterns that have really been catching my eye and regular podcasts in the works. So we'll talk soon. I hope that you and your loved ones are happy and healthy and uh, yeah, have a good weekend.